Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, TGIF. It's, we are Friday in the house. Friday, Friday, okay, sorry. My mic level is kind of high lately, I've noticed. Okay, so you know how like all I do sometimes is like do lives on YouTube because I want this channel to grow? Um, well, now my life has come to a point where I just start dreaming about this stuff. Last night, I had a dream that I was friends with Janelle Eason, and I was at her house, and they were buying dogs and then putting them to sleep right away. Sad. I woke up feeling so depressed. So depressed. Then I had a dream I was with the Duggar girls wearing pants. And going to the beach and thinking about naked things. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Because I know you guys hate when I ramble. La, 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 la. All right, I'm just so happy it's Friday. Not that it matters. I'm a mom. There's no such thing as the weekend. And not like it matters. All I do is make stuff and do stuff and work. There's no days off when you're creator. All right. So, Andrew Glennon was online last night answering questions. Can you believe this? He was spilling tea all over the place. I was like, damn, I could, I, I immediately thought about you guys. I was like, oh crap, gotta get this for my peoples. And for those of you that are like, saying that we're rehashing the old stuff, same stuff, eh. It's a storyline. It's a storyline at without a crystal ball. And when you have a storyline, you got to bring the stories, right? And plus, Andrew and like Amber have not been speaking out very much about this. So, this is like the first time that Andrew has been answering questions and really like saying anything, and I was like, "Ah, this is delicious." So, get your cups. My hot, my coffee is really hot. All right, let's get ready. So on Instagram, Mr. Andrew shared a, let me see if I can find the actual photo that he shared. Dee, dee. Sorry, I did not organize these for you. There it is. So this is what he shared on Instagram. It says, nothing better in the world than a clean conscience. Is that a little snark? Is he saying something to Amber about how he didn't cheat? You think? Do you think he's like, Amby, I didn't do that. I think you're right, because that's exactly what it was. So he started um, kind of, let's see if I can get to a place where... Okay, so here we go. So it all started with Amber sharing a photo on Instagram about her, like, cheating is a choice or cheating is a choice, not a mistake. And so an Instagram person was like, um, I hope you two deal with this off social media, shading each other by posting quotes isn't the way to do it. Nonetheless, I hope you're, you and baby James and Amber are safe. And he said, I was told by someone close to me close to her, that she posted that about a friend's, friend's relationship and took it down when it was taken the wrong way. Uh, okay, fine, but when all those stories came out, she never once thought to clear the air and my name. That hurt the deepest. So apparently Amber was telling people that that, that wasn't about Andrew, that was about a friend's relationship. Taken the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Right. When does Amber ever post about anyone but herself? That wouldn't be narcissistic of her. So uh, he was not happy with that. 
Um, then someone asked about whether or not, you know, what, what did he make of Sean? Because, you know, Sean Portwood has been defending Amber on Twitter and basically like telling everyone that Am that what Andrew's saying is not true and there's more to the story. And he responded by saying, he's her brother and that's what siblings do. I have nothing but respect for Sean. I love spending time with him and talking about life. But that is what siblings do. They stick by each other's side through thick and thin. It's hard to believe someone you love so dearly could take things to such extremes. But there are many truths that will be coming out. So just have patience. Sean still doesn't know what his mother has done. His mother? Is this about Tanya? What did Tanya do? Ooh. Ooh, Andrew, I need some tea for that. Hmm. I'll be interested to see what happens there. All right. Then someone asked him about, you know, like, has this happened before? And he said it wasn't the first time, just the worst time. It's been a long road of trying to heal. And that's what he told the police. If you had have seen the affidavit, he told them that this is uh, she has been she has been violent with him multiple times. This was literally just the worst incident that he has experienced with her. Um, then when they were like t when people were like clapping at him about shading people, um, he said, "I'm not shading anyone at all." Would you would just disagree with what I wrote. I'm sure Amber's conscience is perfectly clean. Don't read into it too much. I just don't like being called a cheater when I'm not. If I cheated, you wouldn't hear a peep from me, but I'm just not that species of animal, so conscience clean. So he's very adamant that there was absolutely no cheating in this situation and that all of these rumors that he did otherwise are ridiculous and that they're just rumors. Um, okay, we already seen that. So then they were asking about MTV and there was some rumors going around that, remember that tweet I showed you yesterday about, or a couple days ago from that woman that basically said that like MTV hasn't reached out to Amber or to Andrew or James at all. Well, he just confirmed that and says, James and I aren't part of the show anymore, it seems. Follow your ladies, then they went that way basically implying that he will no longer be on the show. Which is crazy to me. Gary's still on the damn show. Um, and then when people were asking, like, how did it get to this place? Like, did you do something? They were literally, like, trying to, like, a woman on Instagram was basically saying, like, it's your fault, Andrew, like you must have provoked her. And he said, I've been trying to find the rational explanation for the actions, but doctors have told me to stop for the sake of my own mental well-being. Because people were blaming him, saying that he must have provoked her. He must have started this. He must have caused this. And then when people were actually bashing her, he actually stuck up for her. And he said, I don't ever bash her. I just want, I want what I've always wanted, a happy family that included her getting the help that she had, she should have received during Gary. My goal was to have, <clears throat> my goal was to show the world the girl I saw, that is to show a world that is deep down beneath all the scar tissue of her past and only comes out on sunny days, innocent. But people didn't want to hear me mentioning her worsening condition the only goal I have now is to make sure baby James has the best and safest life to ensure a great future. I don't like any comments bashing any of my family members. That hurt my heart deeply. So there's been a lot of discussion as well as with the um, 
in his uh, statements to CPS as well as to authorities that um, she wasn't taking care of herself, she wasn't taking her medications, um, she had become more and more unstable. And this kind of just sort of reinforces what he's saying, that she, her condition was getting worse, she wasn't taking care of herself, no one was listening to him, um, she was becoming more and more violent, and she was refusing to take her medications and do therapy. So for everyone that's been kind of yelling at me saying that I'm not being sensitive to somebody in dealing with mental illness, I am sensitive, but he's actually reinforcing what I've just said this whole time. Um, if you have an issue like this, you have to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. And if you're not taking care of yourself, things like this can happen. And then there's consequences. And she had every tool and she had everything. And she even sounds like had a boyfriend that was concerned about her and wasn't doing the right things. So when you have all of the things at your disposal to do what you need to do and you're not doing it, you have to have some level of accountability, no matter how sick you are. Um, and then when someone asked him like how he was feeling about everything, he said, we had everything going for us, everything. This is devastation. So clearly Andrew is still suffering. He's still very upset about what's going on. You know, he had a life very, like they were talking about getting married. He was looking at locations and discussing that with MTV producers. So this wasn't like he wanted this to happen. And this statement by him reinforces that. Um, and then when people were asking for sort of more information about like, what did he do to try to help her? And he said, I've made numerous pleas for help for her to her friends, to her family, to her doctors and to MTV but it all fell on deaf ears or it was just a really, really complex situation. I was trying to fix her health because I was with her every day and I saw her worsen and it scared me. So he's trying to get her help. He's trying to get anyone to help him, help her, talking to her friends her and her family and her doctors. No one's listening to him. MTV's not listening to him. I can't imagine that's going to make any man feel like, secure, especially if you are with someone. And he said that like, you know, he wasn't their only job at this point was MTV. And so he was with her 24 hours a day. And that has to be difficult if you can't get someone help. And because she's an adult and they're not married, he can't force her to get help. He can only try to nudge her. Um, I kind of feel for this guy like this has got to be super tough for him. Um, So then they were talking about, you know, like, how does Amber get like this? Like, why does she feel the way she does? Why does she always blame other people? And he says, your brain personally is wired to compute through deception and fear. I feel you are someone who's been taken advantage of by people, and it's really hard for you to trust others. There isn't a sinister scheme behind everything in life. Dr. Evil, sometimes life just does what life does, and it happens. I saw this. I saw us in a mansion and my vineyard producing and with brothers and sisters for James. I plan for the best and to help those I love not to trick and trap or deceive. You're thinking of Matt Bear. And so that was in response to these assertions or allegations that he was using her, that this was for clout, that he had ulterior motives. Um, and he's saying that's not even the case. He wanted the best for her. He wanted a life with her. He didn't want this to happen. Um, so then he sort of clarified on that and he said this, this above comment was in response to making a comment now deleted about stuff I experienced in my life. And now here he's going to address some of the stuff that you guys have brought up about his past. And he said, I've processed it and improved. That's all that really matters. But seriously, if you guys have any questions and stuff like that, I will give you the honest truth. I wasn't always a semi-decent human and had to go through rough stuff to fine tune. The art of subtraction. Subtract all the things that don't serve you now or your future. The hardest thing to do is to accept your downfalls, your real mistakes, and see what led you there. How to better, how to do better, and the most important is, the genu and is to genuinely forgive yourself. So he didn't deny that he had marks on his history or that he had done stuff wrong in the past, but he's um, 
asserting that he has changed and he's improved and he's working on forgiving himself and moving forward and open and honest. And he answered a lot of those questions last night. Um, and he said, no, 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 someone brought up my past, so I wanted to respond. And he said, my trick is to try not to be nervous, but in all reality, everyone puts on a show on the cameras. They were asking, like, how do you, like, act naturally on the cam cam cameras? People were thanking him for his honesty. Um, and then when they were, like, telling him he didn't have to talk about it, he said, it's actually sort of cathartic to talk about. Reminds me of how far I've come and how much further I can go if I just talk, keep taking the right steps. So maybe in a lot of ways, these two bonded over their littered pasts of having indiscretions and their um, desire to move forward and make better choices. I mean, I could see how that could bond two people. And I mean, as much as everyone wants to say like he's a scammer and stuff, all I have seen from him in truth is that he's been a really good boyfriend to her on the show. He's been pretty emotional. Um, He's been really like supportive of her. Um, so maybe he has learned from his past. If he has, that's awesome. Um, let's see. Did I say that? Yep. So that was everything that he, most of the like m amazing things that he had to say. And so what do I think about this? I think that there are ob obviously two sides to every story, but if you are watching Team Mom OG this season, and if you have been following her over the past couple of years, I think it's pretty clear that there's been a decline in her behavior, in, in an escalation in her violence and her um, outbursts and her anger. Um, she has dealt with a lot with postpartum depression. She's been dealing with obviously addiction not taking her medications on Teen Mom OG. She like admitted that she, at times just doesn't take her meds so that she can drink and do other things. Um, and it sounds like this was a situation where she wasn't taking care of herself. And uh, ultimately, it, she refused help. And you can't get better if you don't take the help that's offered to you. Um, I'm, I don't know, you guys, I'm, I, the more I'm reading from him and I'm seeing from him and like his statements are very like consistent and he, I mean, and even in all of that stuff, he, he didn't bash her, which I think is very commendable. He didn't say anything bad. He actually like seemed ex concerned about her. Um, and I think it's sad that it actually came to this because it sounds like um, they really, he really wanted this to work. Um, and that is actually a really good question, um, Morgan. Are they broken up currently? Um, so he and her, I mean, they have no communication. Um, but apparently now after this kind of, so, you know, Here's the deal, you guys. Oops. Um, but so the <laughs> sorry, I'm getting distracted because I was buffering there for a second. So here's the deal. Um, as all this kind of stuff has dropped and there's been all of this stuff that's kind of come out. Um, obviously, Amber is continuing to assert and to say that uh, that Andrew is talking to other women. She has been deflecting from this. Um, and not long after that, Andrew started engaging online. Um, an article was dropped on Us Weekly, which basically said that Amber does know that Andrew was talking to another woman and she is devastated. And furthermore, the, the, they said that their, rec their reconciliation is looking less likely and the priority in her life is now James. So um, she's going to stick to this idea that Andrew cheated and he's going to say I didn't cheat and she's going to say it's over. But I don't think that she really had the choice to say it's over. I think Andrew was done um, after what happened. 
So I think in, in this case, and I'm obviously there's, it's a party. So I, this is just my opinion. You don't have to agree with me, but I would say in a choice where somebody has been the victim of DB, DV, I don't know that the perpetrator gets the choice to decide if they're going to reconcile. I think it, a lot of it comes down to whether or not the individual that's been victimized by them wants to reconcile. And, you know, based on how he's been responding, it doesn't sound like he wants to because of what happened and because of the fact that she won't take care of herself and he doesn't want his son around that. And if that's the truth, I think that's fair. I mean, I don't think it's safe to have a child around a mother that is not taking care of her health and isn't doing the steps that she needs to do to make sure that her children and herself are safe. Mental illness is a very difficult and challenging thing to overcome. Many people will battle with it their entire lives. Um, I mean, most of us that struggle with it will. We have ups, we have downs, we have good days, we have bad days. But, you know, um, I want to thank all of you guys in comments that have shared your journeys and told me what your um, background is with borderline personality disorder and how it has affected you. I want to tell you I've seen it and I've heard it and I um, I hear you when you say that what she's doing isn't okay because she could be doing what she needs to do to prevent this kind of stuff. I've read you guys that have told me about your own issues with being incarcerated due, due to the violent outbursts with BPD um, or BPD. So, but I also hear you when you say that, like, please don't let her be the poster child for what this disorder is because most of us aren't like this. And I think you guys, we need to remember that, like, just because she's suffering with this, this isn't like the norm. Um, this isn't what everyone that's do dealing with this disorder is doing. Um, and everyone has the ability to take in what they need to do. And um, I want to also thank all of you for telling me about, you know, this isn't about her being on medication, because that's the biggest thing is that Amber seems to want to have a medication to fix this. And, and it's a personality disorder, mean, meaning it's a learned behavior. It's programming in your brain. It's a pattern of behavior that you have to reprogram and learn tools and ways to get over. And recovery with it is possible. You can fight it, but it can be a lot more manageable if you go through the therapy and you go through the um, different forms of um, dialectical behavioral therapy that can help you with e um, EMDR. There's so many different ways that you can manage this. The, the rage doesn't have to consume you. It doesn't have to impact your life. Um, and, you know, you have to be able to want to change. And that's not easy. Sometimes it's easier to stay the same and blame everybody else. And that's why I don't think that this is just, you know, BPD, there could be some narcissism in here too, you know? Um, narcissists don't want to be wrong ever. So, I don't know, I'm not a doctor. So, I don't want any of you to think that I am slamming her and I am, I feel terribly if this is her declining health, but I also think like, this maybe will save her life then. If she does have to go away and she has to get clean again and she has to go back into therapy, I mean, maybe this is exactly what she'll need to actually get the things that she needs. Keely said, my mother-in-law has BPD. She blames her unacceptable, her unacceptable behavior on mental illness and it's our fault for not accepting her. I feel like she, that's what Amber is doing. Mary C, I have, I have BPD and I've never beaten up a man in my life. See, that's what I'm saying, you guys. I know a lot of you are doing, dealing with this and fighting the good fight every day. And I know that you guys are all doing what you need to be doing. And I want to like keep giving you strength and knowing that like this is not, you're not, your fight is not seen in vain. And I'm, I see you and I hear you and I, I'm so glad that you're here and you share that information with me every single day. Um, you guys are so amazing for always feeling like you can be open and I hope my channel will always make you feel like you're open and accepted even if you're struggling. We are here for you. So I want to know what you guys think and whether or not you agree, like if you believe Andrew at this point, 
Um, and like, what do you think this means moving forward for Amber? Um, MTV was obviously filming, but obviously at this point she has three felonies she's facing. And if she's convicted, she's going to go to, she's going to go away for two and a half years minimum. So, um, she could literally lose it all. And part of me feels like MTV enables this because she can act out and be do all of this and then she still can have all of the money that she needs to live. So there's no financial consequences. And sometimes when you're in a, a very ill state, whether it's addiction or it's with your mental health, if you don't have consequences that are negative, you're never going to get better ever. And you have to be able to like see what what your behavior is doing and how, how it's hurting other people. And you have to have the emotional intelligence to realize that it's not everybody else that's making the situations get to this point. It's you. So if everyone else is triggering you and if it if if these situations are happening with every single person and and it's always somebody else's fault but then you consistently show a pattern of bad behavior if the common denominator is you then you're you're the one that needs to be fixed not everybody else and i only know this because i went through this a couple years ago with my own mental illness and i was forced to get help because I was the common denominator in all of my failed friendships, all of my failed relationships, and all of my failures. And if I was going to do the right thing and like get healthy for my family and for my son, I had to be accountable. And that's what it takes sometimes is realizing like I'm the problem here. And that's not an easy place to get to. She has to hit her rock bottom. I'm glad as hard as the last two years have been for my life, and having every single one of my friends abandon me and and refuse to talk to me and walk away from me um i'm grateful every day that that happened because even though i don't have as many friends as i once did i don't live in a place anymore where i'm afraid that i've done something to sabotage anyone else or that i've hurt somebody else's feelings and that's the place that she needs to get to so if she has people in her life that are supporting her, I hope that's the message that they're telling her. I don't think she should be abandoned, you guys. I don't think it's crappy for her friends to support her, but I also think that if she does have friends, that's the message they should be sending her. So tell me what you think. What do you think about his statements? I will be all ears. Um, mind you, I might not respond to all of your comments, um, but I do read them, and as this channel has been growing, which has been insane, <laughs> I feel like I just hit 7,000 like a couple days ago, and I'm all, almost close to hitting seven or 8,000. Um, I'm getting so many comments because I'm doing so many different streams. So if I don't comment, it's not that I don't um, care. I promise you guys. Um, I care about all of you, and I'm so grateful that every single day, that you guys come here and you listen and you um, spend your spend your mornings and afternoons with me. So I'll be back later to bring you some more news. We're gonna be talking about breast implants and what's going on with a rare form of cancer. Bye guys.